Welcome back to Corbett Report Radio, friends. I am your host, James Corbett of CorbettReport.com, and it is Thursday night, so we are joined on the line once again by our old friend, James Evan Pilato of FoodWorldOrder.com to go over all of the latest food, health, and environment stories from around the world. But before we do that, we have a caller waiting patiently on the line. We have Brock in Australia. So, Brock, thank you so much for phoning back in tonight. What's on your mind? Hi, James. Great to speak with you guys again. You too. Um... Yeah, well, basically, quickly, I just wanted to go over this, the uh, whole uh, Coney 2012 issue. I mean, wow, hasn't that kind of uh, become a whirlwind phenomenon it's relatively the, quickly? It's the top of Google News right now. Campaign against a Ugandan <laughs> warlord sweeps the internet. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we've, we've had uh, the mainstream uh, TV channels airing the video commercial-free on prime time, you know, it's just... <laughs> yeah, because if you or I made a video, I'm sure they would be happy to air it primetime commercial free for us, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so transparent, really, but I, uh, unfortunately, once again, millions and millions and millions of people can be swept into the fervor, the, the bloodlust, just by a, a well-produced video. And it goes again to show the power of media and why it is so important that we do have the alternative voices out there. It, it really, really does. I mean, I have a little bit of a confession to make. You know, as um, as Madison Rupert pointed out on your show yesterday, you know, uh, that documentary is is so well made in terms of how it pulls on the emotional heartstrings, and you know, and and, and on on that guilt of that this is happening, and you, you know, this is the only way that you can possibly do something about this. You know, but. Exactly. I mean, that's the point. They, they do all of this to show all this terrible, horrible stuff that's going on that no one supports and everyone wants to stop. And then they tell you the only thing we can do is make sure that the U.S. military advisors don't leave the country. That's the way to solve the problem. Yeah, exactly right. You can just I mean, you can, you can just see the suits in, uh, in Washington and, you know, the uh, and, and, and AFRICOM just rubbing their hands and licking their lips over this whole thing, can't you? Unfortunately so. Unfortunately so. All right. Well, Brock, thank you so much for the call, but we're going to transition into food world order now. We have so much on, the, on our plate, metaphorically speaking, <laughs> if you'll forgive the pun. So, uh, so, James, what have you got up for us first? Uh, you know, it, it's such an easy transition because I think as we see things in a way kind of speeding up and all becoming kind of so exposed and the mask is slipping on so many levels that even as we move into coverage of foodworldorder.com, it still stays on this kind of viral bandwagon meme and something that had been on my mind but I hadn't had time to do a, a bunch of work on it myself but making the rounds on all the social networks Facebook mostly there's this list of Monsanto owned companies and it says do not buy Monsanto owned companies and it is everything from Aunt Jemima to essentially everything you would find at a conventional grocery store Kellogg's, Heinz, Hunt's, Frito-Lay, ConAgra. And I saw this and first heard about it. I was like, I think that's BS. I've never in all my years kind of heard of Monsanto being a company that owns companies. So I just did a quick search and wouldn't you know it, I found it on Snopes.com. But they list it as false. And it says the list purportedly details a wealth of food-related companies or brands supposedly owned by Monsanto, the multinational agricultural biotech corporation. In fact, Monsanto doesn't own any of the listed companies, and this list appears to be an attempt to compile companies selling food items that make use of products developed by Monsanto. So, James, I think this is a great illustration, and I even saw someone put this up at my workplace, which is I think a smarter than average independent local grocery store chain, but it was make it was it was all around. These are the kind of things, James, that ultimately aren't helpful. And I think it's it's akin to saying, you know, and George Bush blew up the World Trade Centers. It's not that simple. And if we go around spreading false information about this, I what I really want to do is just call up Monsanto's public service line and go, hey, you guys know about this list, right? I'm no fan of your work. But this isn't true. Monsanto isn't in the business of owning other businesses. They're in the business of controlling the seeds that every business has to come through one way or the other if they all have their way. James, do you have a word on that before we log on to the anti-sec? 
Well, you're exactly right. I mean, it's poisoning the what well, and it makes, unfortunately, all of the other good information out there about Monsanto, uh, by which I mean the information that exposes what they're really doing, uh-huh. seem crazy and, and out to lunch when people look into this false information and find it to be false. So you're exactly right. We have to be careful about what we're spreading and make sure that we know what we're spreading, the information we're spreading, because if we, uh, if we po- help to poison the well, then we're it, uh, perhaps unwittingly contributing to the demise of, uh, of this alternative news uh, network that we're trying to create and that's and that's really i mean you can kind of watch it growing in as a petri dish of well poison going on on facebook it's it's kind of fascinating and disturbing on a number of levels but let's not get into that right now james posted to food world order anti-sec dumps monsanto data on the web from cnet.com Anonymous continued its ongoing attack on agricultural biotech giant Monsanto by publishing an outdated database of the company's material. This is the newest in a barrage of strikes from hackers aligned with Anonymous who operate under the anti-sec banner. And they correctly point out your continued attack on the world's food supply, as well as the health of those who eat it, has earned you our full attention, wrote anti-sec. Your crimes against humanity are too many to name on one page. James, this is where we do find ourselves again wondering just what is really going on. Now, I can get behind exposing Monsanto and their practices, but as we discussed yesterday on New World Next Week, this this gets into virtual flag terrorism, and I guess we're seeing it on every level that we're discussing. Absolutely. And what I found interesting about this story, I mean, it sounds ominous and everything, but when you actually look into what information was released, it's basically emails that people were sending to Monsanto were released. So all of these people who were writing to Monsanto, many of them were critical about it, had their personal emails and, and names and, and personal information released in this hack. And uh, and people hmm. who were taking place in this admitted, yeah, well, this isn't actually going to damage Monsanto, really. I mean, it's it's really more damaging to the people who are writing into them. But still, you know, it shows that their their servers are, are uh, lax, their security is lax. So uh, so really, actually, when you take a look at what what was really released here, it was nothing of substance whatsoever, and it won't hurt Monsanto in any way, shape, or form. But it will hurt people who actually took the time to voice their concern about them. Is that what you're telling me? That's apparently, from what I understand, that's how it breaks down. And if if that doesn't seem right to you, then um, hey, join the club. Now, of of the things that get all the all the attention online and get the get the you know the the water cooler moving. This one is getting attention, but not nearly as much, James. I'll I'll briefly mention corporations kidnap the Lorax to greenwash dangerous products. Child advocates and environmentalists slam the greenwashing of Dr. Seuss's beloved the Lorax because the new movie, of course, is a consumer-driven, corporate-sponsored ad campaigns and product tie-ins surrounding the release of this new movie based on the book originally from 1971. But it's got Hewlett Packard and Mazda and IHOP and Target and all your favorite environmentally friendly firms. Unfortunately, there are other kind of decent firms, or at least we thought they were in the food world order. Companies like Seventh Generation, they've got the Lorax all over their toilet tissue and and dish soap and things. So this was something that did get people's Susanian panties in a bunch, seeing basically a story that's about environmentalism used to sell cars and to sell moons over Miami at IHA. Oh, wait, that's Denny's. Selling junk food and, and garbage that essentially go counter to the message of the film. But it is important to note that Theodore Geisel and Dr. Seuss was was no, you know straight edger when it comes to corporatism he did ads for ford motor company and he did ads for the rockefellers standard oil and he did propaganda work so before we get all wiggy and go oh i can't believe these corporations are doing this it was compromised perhaps in the first place well that that's kind of the point i think and with stories like this, it just always amazes me how, how attached people can get to these fictional characters that are really just two-dimensional representations of, of imaginary beings. But people invest so much of their identity in them that they get all offended when they see them plastered all over mm-hmm. corporate advertising or whatever. I mean, to me, the point is it's kind of scary how attached some people can get to the uh, 
to the product of someone's imagination rather than about things that are really happening in the world. And that's, a, of course, that's exactly why they want these, uh, these tie-ins, you know, for their corporate uh, greenwashing, because it, people are so invested in these characters that, oh, my God, if the Lorax is on it, I think I want it. And, and we think that that only applies to children, but I think adults are the ones who get involved in this in the scariest way. And, and, and there's a good point to make, too, here, and I saw it in some more kind of, you know, Hollywood industry kind of trade kind of angle is that, oh, it was a long-awaited kind of family film because there hadn't been any. Family films, you know, I never go to them, but they're a huge market because basically, James, everybody, our generation now, they all now have kids and they all love to go to the movies and they grew up with video games and Dr. Seuss and, and all of that. So when a movie like this comes along, they're going to have their kids going, ooh, I want to go see this. And the parents will go, oh, all right. Absolutely. Just one generation leads the next further into the hole. And uh, whether they know it or not, we just keep marching along to the same beat. And absolutely. I mean, it's not surprising to me that this character is being used uh -huh. to try to make uh, horrible, uh, horrible corporations seem like nice, fun, loving, fuzzy, uh, warm, cuddly things. Mm -hmm. And again, there, there are ways that it kind of poisons the well, as we said, the, you know, I don't think I ever would have equated, you know, seventh generation with Mazda or high hop, but now there it is. Let's get even more dangerous, James. Onlinenews.com.pk, and I believe this sources back to the New York Times, and I have a, a host of other supplemental contextual information from the Register and Wikipedia and all, all around to make sense of this. Genetically altered bird flu virus, not dangerous. The scientist who made a deadly bird flu virus transmissible in mammals touching off public fears of a pandemic said that the virus he created was neither as contagious nor as dangerous as people had been led to believe. And this gets into the National Science Advisory Board for Biosecurity, and these experiments involve a type of bird flu virus known, James, as, of course, H5N1. So they're hiding seeds away in a icy, icy Norway seed vault, we're the bad ones because we're driving too much and, you know, the furnaces and septic tanks that, that were referred to earlier, all those things are, are, are bad. But we're going to do this. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, I'm glad you have this update because I had been following this story and I had a video out about the story when it was first breaking, but I hadn't seen this update to it. And it's interesting in the way that it kind of deflects the, uh, the, the, the thrust of what the debate was really about, which is, you know, when we start developing these super weaponized bird flus and whatever, um, you know, who gets to control them and who gets to say, no, you can't do that, uh -huh. and who gets to control, you know, how, how this technology is developed. And they're basically saying, well, it's not as de deadly as we said, therefore it doesn't apply to this, uh, this thing. So the debate gets kind of moved further down the field, and, and we, don't, uh, we don't get to the heart of the matter. So it's interesting to see, you know, this development. In a related bit posted along from the intelhub.com, bat flu scare hits the media among and alongside the memes of this new weaponized bird flu possible release. James, we've discussed in the last couple of weeks how we are trying to expand our, our food world order coverage to include more of the environment and health and, and all of these kind of issues that, that ultimately re, you know relate to our, our, our bodies. U.S. stands firm against drug legalization, Biden says. Vice President Joseph R. Biden Jr., he is on tour in Latin America currently, but he delivered a blunt message on Monday to leaders in Latin America who are contemplating opening the door to the legalization of illicit drugs. The United States will not budge in its opposition. Biden, on a two-day trip to Mexico and Honduras ahead of a regional summit meeting next month, told reporters that he welcomed a debate over legalization, but he then knocked down all the arguments in favor of it. Interestingly enough, we jump down in the article, we'll get, you know, the expert opinion, James, discussing Guatemala here specifically about which nations are pro and maybe con the legalization, ending the prohibition of essentially marijuana, a plant that grows. The growing discussion about legalization comes largely from the struggles on the ground with organized crime and violence, said Shannon K. O'Neill, a scholar at the Council on Foreign Relations who studies American relations in the region. But in particular cases, that of Guatemalan president, for instance, it also likely reflects at least in part the desire to increase U.S. aid to his country and to lift the ban on weapons sales instituted in the 70s. So, James, it's, it's 
it's gangster land, and we know that drugs run Wall Street, and they make the world go round. Unfortunately, ever you know, we can even mention the you know the Dutch East India, you know the Opium Wars, and all that. You know, that's the gangsters. Those are the guys. They figured out the drugs. And, and that's what it's been. So it seems, James, there's a lot of these countries and we're kind of pushing back and forth. It's like, well, do you want to continue to play the game and we can keep kind of moving the drugs in and out and we'll give you a little bit of aid and we'll give you lots of cool weapons too? Or do you want to dare let people use this and grow this for themselves and, and we'll have to take you out? That's a, a, an offer you can't refuse, I believe, is what the gangsters say. That's pretty much it, isn't it? And it's interesting because I remember back at the beginning of the Obama uh, presidency or dictatorship, um, it looked more like Obama was going to be the one that would open and relax and, and uh-huh. perhaps even, you know, de- decriminalize uh, marijuana. And we, we mentioned that on New World Next Week and other places. But it sounds like, um, yeah, that's definitely not going to happen. That was, the, you know, that was one of the numerous ways that, of course, cam- you know, the, the campaigner Obama was the blank slate. It was like, oh, you, dr- you know, in the drug war, sure. I'll do that. Oh, you want, you know, this? Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll take on and say yes to anything you want to project and your beliefs of, of hope and change. Continuing on, we're blasting through trying everything that I've got on foodworldorder.com, James, and we've discussed food inflation time and time again on Food World Order. More foods going to pouch packaging. And again, this is something I've seen at work. All the baby food recently has all turned into these sort of pouch packages that are you know kind of squeezy now all the big companies are getting into it campbell's and heinz and the trend is being driven by savings on packaging and shipping costs as well as aesthetics an upscale pouch sporting elaborate graphics offers a modern look and premium appeal marketers say plus james there's no more pesky recycling now people can just throw this thing away so the baby food, the glass jars, the typical glass jars, which don't have BPA in them, if you're even using this kind of stuff for baby food anyway, when you can just grind up some food for them. But perhaps that's beside the point. This is another way that, at least as I see it, James, it's another way kind of tricking consumers who want to be upscale into actually buying things that are against their beliefs. Like the Lorax. I think, yeah, there you go. I think you're right. Well, on that note, we'll take a short break and we'll finish up with the Food World Order All updates right. right after this break. Stay tuned right there. Okay, friends, welcome back to the closing minutes of Quarter Report Radio here on this Thursday evening, talking to James Evan Pilato of foodworldorder.com and many other websites besides, and perhaps we'll run those down at the end of tonight's show. But before we do, let's finish up with the foodworldorder.com updates. So let's move along to the Michigan Lottery. James, what's up next? Well, it's interesting, as you and I were talking briefly during the break, this is one of the bigger, if you go to Google News and type in food, this will be one of the first stories and as we note, and again, with I try and add in as much, you know, the videos, the links, the original reporting, Michigan was slow to crack down on big lottery winners. However, the update is Michigan lottery winner loses government food aid. Michigan's DHS has cut off a $200 a month food aid to Amanda Clayton in the wake of media reports that she had won a million dollars in the state lottery in September. She kept getting her dough. When WDIV-TV, a local television station, reported on the case, it played into an effort to the state in the state capitol to limit taxpayer-funded benefits to people who are eligible or to eliminate them for people who have had the good luck to move on. This reminds us of the stories I've covered from right here in Oregon about people using their EBT or Oregon Trail or food aid or food stamps or whatever you want to call it on what's basically junk food and Starbucks frappuccinos. This debate is only going to grow more and more, James, as ultimately we see, you know, going back to the top of the show, talking about Obama and the Democrats and Breitbart and the reactionaries and all of those things. Maybe the Obama administration really is and has always been about class warfare, but we'll we'll leave that question for another time. You know what time it is now, James? I'm betting it's time to purge what we've binged. (laughs) And we're going to blast down the list. Binge and purge, pink slime, satire, coconut, cottage, and more. List of headlines all posted at the top of foodworldorder.com right now as I come to you. 
pink slime for food lunch. So, of course, McDonald's and the other fast food places may have said they're going to kick it out of their food. But now the government's buying 7 million pounds of that ammonia-treated meat for meals that you've seen squeezing through. That looks kind of neat if you didn't know it was some sort of meat product. But it is, it's barely meat. Campaign Against Beef Product International's Pink Slime. More from foodsafetynews.com. Campbell's Soup phasing out BPA use in cans, but moving into the aforementioned squeezy packs for things. Disney's Epcot Park retooling their childhood obesity exhibit because critics say it's insensitive. But let's tie in other stories that maybe flesh it out and make it all make sense. Celebrating the 100th birthday of the Oreo. Sodas contain animal carcinogens, study finds again from foodsafetynews.com. ConAgra Foods celebrating the history of frozen meals to mark National Frozen Food Day, James. That was on March 6th. I I think you missed that holiday. (laughs) Best, getting into expiration dates, what do they really mean? Best before or expires by, that's actually a press release from MarketWatch. An interesting one from CivilEats.com about cottage food laws, about selling food from your home kitchen. That will probably become a bigger story. Coconut oil and gluten-free on food fads. More on that from U.S. News and more. And the Michael Taylor petition to keep him out of the FDA top spot. That is growing more and more, James. And a funny bit of satire from The Onion. FDA okays every drug pending approval takes the rest of the year off. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Yes, it's funny because it's true <laughs> exactly. as with so much of Onion, exactly as we've been over before. All right, an incredible amount of information. Once again, I hope people are going to go to foodworldorder.com to check out all of that information and all of the links that you have there, as well as mediamonarchy.com, holyhexes.com, cyberspacewar.com, newworldnextweek.com. James Evan Pilato, thanks again for your time. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate it. All right, looking forward to it again next week. And to all of you out there, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I'm looking forward to talking to you all again tomorrow night. So stay tuned right here on Republic Broadcasting. Talk to you again in 23 hours.